Thank you all very much, and nice job for being here at the last lecture of the day. I actually have friends on the planning committee, believe it or not, and I still ended up as the last lecture. But um, we are going to talk about stress and aging, and um, you know, I think all of us realize that stress is an important factor. I actually saw this sign in an office somewhere. Good morning, let the stress begin. Um, I think most Americans realize that stress is really a part of our everyday life, and as physicians, um, I'm sure that all of us at some point, as part of taking the patient's history, is, have noticed patients being particularly stressed. What I want to do today is to talk about really what is the impact at a cellular level, at an inflammatory level, and more importantly, what can we do about it? Age management medicine is about a lot of things. Lifestyle is really at the center of that, and I guess that's where the, the stress part of it, you know, really comes into play. And I think most of us, even knowing that it's part of an age management plan, probably don't do much to actually intervene. I want to get a little bit personal here for a second. I am... Um, um, I don't know whether to say is or was, the uh, eldest of three children. And the last six years have been a little stressful for me personally. Uh, and I just want you to think about this in the context of real people for a minute. My younger sister um, was forced to evacuate after Hurricane Katrina. Um, she lost her house. She had a child who was born with a genetic uh, defect. She had a husband who was um, put in rehab for narcotic drug abuse, and she got a divorce. And my sister died of metastatic breast cancer on um, the sixth year after being diagnosed. My younger brother had um, was going through an ugly divorce, owed the IRS almost a half a million dollars, and had a business that was going down the tubes, and died while watching a baseball game on TV. So if we ever think for a second that stress doesn't impact our lives, then, you know, we probably shouldn't even be practicing medicine. So I think really in the end that the lifestyle component of age management medicine is probably the most overlooked and I would venture to say the most important. I'm going to talk a little bit about cortisol, and a lot of this you probably already know. I'm not going to get into measuring cortisol, just the impact that it has physiologically on our body. And, of course, we know that it has to do with the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland and the secretion, then, of cortisol from the adrenal glands and that it helps to regulate glucose, increase body fat, helps our body to defend itself against infection, and helps the body to respond to stress. And it also has a component in uh, inflammation and our body's inflammatory response. Oops. Well, what about the secretion of cortisol and the aging process? Well, one of the interesting things when you look at the literature is that as we age, we have higher nocturnal levels of cortisol when it's compared to younger individuals. So just getting older in general tends to change our cortisol secretion. We have also a greater overall cortisol stimulation across that diurnal cycle that we're all familiar with. And here's the thing that's really bad, is that our cortisol remains elevated relative to age-related declines of other hormones. So as we move through the aging process and we start to lose DHEA, estrogen, testosterone, our cortisol remains elevated, and we're going to talk about this a little later. This is most likely all due to a reduced negative feedback sensitivity of that HPA axis. So the entire axis starts to be dysregulated as we move through the aging process. What about gender differences? Well, age seems to have a greater effect on the cortisol responses to pharmacologic and physiologic challenges in women compared to men. However, and this is kind of interesting, older men have a much greater cortisol response to psychological stresses compared to older women. So um, just think about, put your patients in a context of what kind of things could be causing them psychological stress. Um, maybe retirement and not being financially uh, sound uh, and reaching retirement age. Maybe um, having to care for um, a spouse who perhaps is uh, early Alzheimer's or things like that, psychological stressors that you need to talk to your patients about and be aware of. 
Well, how does this stress affect inflammation? Well, glucocorticoids are supposed to have strong anti-inflammatory effects, and those are modulated through glucocorticoid receptors that are on the, in the cytoplasm of immune cells. And this glucocorticoid sensitivity of these immune cells is greatly increased with physical stressors. So it's, it's very acutely uh, affected by stress. Well, what they found looking at a couple of different studies that I found really interesting was what about emotional stress and inflammation? So what they found was chronically stressful and emotionally distressing circumstances are associated with resistance of those immune systems to that anti-inflammatory effect of glucocorticoids or cortisol. So people that are under chronic stress now, they're resistant to what the body's mechanism is to decrease inflammation. And the group of people they looked at in these studies, and there are several of them, were caregivers who were taking care of a child with cancer or taking care of a spouse with dementia. So when you're talking to your patients and you're doing some kind of an assessment of what their life is like, it's important to be aware that they may be under chronic stress and, and find some avenues for which they can deal with that. There appears to be cross-sensitization between stressors and cytokines observed in these studies. So it suggests that chronic stress increases the inflammatory response to other stressors. So other things that may be going on in life, like um, exercise, for example, if you're already stressed from home, it could exacerbate the inflammatory response. So it all starts to play in together. Glucocorticoids inhibit interleukin-6 production is lower in the older as compared to younger men. So everything, again, as we move through the aging process, starts to be affected. In this particular study, actually, that Hefner did in 2011, they showed that treatment with testosterone diminished that effect of inflammation that is um, precipitated by stress. So right there is a good reason, again, to consider testosterone for its anti-inflammatory effects, particularly in the stressed patient. 